you have got some serious nerve. Do you know that? Honestly, just where do you get off? I want you to tell me exactly why I'm not allowed back at my own parents' house. And just when did you move in there and start living with them, huh? I don't remember that ever being a thing. Fiona, what is this all about? I'm afraid I really don't understand. I am talking about my parents' house. That house is my house. Do you understand? How dare you just barge in there as if you own the place. I mean, you even had the gall to take over my own bedroom. And now I can't even go back there to live with them. I want you out of that house right away. Do you understand me? Sorry, so you're wanting to move back in with your parents right now. Is that what's going on? But I thought that you had moved to New York last spring, right? You said at the last family dinner about how you had found some really great job and they were going to put you up out there, right? I know what I said, thank you very much, but I quit that job and I am never ever going back. I just want to live with my parents in my hometown and that's that, okay? You quit your job, but you really just started it, didn't you? I know that I just started it, but I didn't like it one bit and I hate New York City. Why do you think I'm coming back and wanting to move back in in the first place? But imagine my shock when I find out that you and my brother have moved in with my parents since I moved out. I don't ever remember telling you that you were allowed to live there or use my room, Cassandra. I want to move back in there because what's the point of paying rent on some place when you could just live with your parents and not have to worry about anything? Oh, Fiona, I'm really sorry. I thought that Cameron would have told you that we were moving in already. But yeah, we all agreed to do this after you moved out for your job in the big city. Well, now I'm moving back, so you and Cameron can go ahead and pack up all your things because you both are moving out. So leave and give me back my room already. Fiona, please, you can't be serious about that. I mean, we did so much in preparation for this, you can't just announce that you're moving back and expect everyone to accommodate for you. Do you know how troublesome it's going to be for us to do what you want? You think you're going to be inconvenienced by this? What about me? I quit my job. I'm unemployed. Don't you get it? I have no job and no house at all. If you don't want to move out, then the least that you can do is pay my rent in my new place. You really think we're just going to pay for a whole apartment that we aren't living in? Well, if you don't like it, then you know what you have to do. Cass, uh, are you there? I really am sorry to bug you like this while you're at work, but I had something that I needed to talk to you about. You didn't, by chance, happen to get some messages from Fiona, did you? Oh yes, we were actually just talking to each other not that long ago, if you must know. She told me that she was going to be moving back in and that she wanted us out of the house. She said that if we didn't want to do that, then we could just pay her rent for her where she's at now. I can't believe that she would do something like this. She's being so ridiculous. Ugh, Cass, I am so sorry that you're having to deal with this. My sister has never really been good at not getting her way. I'll say. I mean, I was pretty surprised when she started sending me those messages. She can't honestly expect us to just pack up and leave at the drop of a hat like this, right? I thought that she was just so excited to start her job in New York. I have no idea what happened or what made her want to come back. I know, it really is all so sudden. I actually just heard about it from Fiona right now and even I'm floored. I didn't even see this coming at all. I remember when she told everyone about the job, she was so excited that she said she was never ever going to come back home. She said she was going to be a city girl from then on out. That's why your parents came to us in the first place. They thought this would be a chance for them to spend more time with their eldest son. But I had no idea that we would only have such a short time to live in the house before being asked by Fiona to leave. I know what you mean. Something must have happened that really disillusioned her with whatever it was that pushed her to New York in the first place. I really did think that this was something that she wanted to do though, so I wonder what must have happened. Do you have any idea what it could have been at all? She was excited to leave, but now she seems so desperate to come back. Well, the thing about Fiona is that around these parts she's really smart and beautiful, right? She was actually always talking ever since she was little about wanting to go to the big city and make it big. But I guess that maybe she was just intimidated by how many kinds of different people there are in a place like that. 
Maybe she realized that her smarts and looks wouldn't take her as far there as they had here, and she got a bit intimidated. Or maybe there was something about the job that just made her really want to quit and come home. You really think that's what it could have been? That she just got her ego bruised a little? I really have no idea what it is with her, but I guess now that she's made up her mind, do you think you can move out of the house, maybe? Wait, what? Cameron, please tell me you're joking, right? Of course I'm not just going to move out of the house, that's ridiculous! I literally got a new job just so you and I could move out here together, remember? I know, I know, but it's just, well, it's kind of out of our hands now, really. I tried telling Fiona that this was our home now, but she just wasn't listening at all. So I think you just don't really have a choice anymore. So you're really telling me that I need to move out of the house to make room for your sister? Your parents begged for you and I to come and live with them, and now you're saying you want to end it? I get that Fiona's feeling down, but this is all just so rude. It isn't fair at all. <laughs> Come on now, Cass. Don't be such a baby about this. It's not like anyone is forcing you to do anything. I just asked if you could move out is all. And that's still super rude of you. I mean, how could you even ask me that? I, I know, I know, but neither of us know that Fiona was going to come back, right? We thought that she was going to be in New York forever, but now she's not. Besides, just think of how lonely my dad is without his daughter around. Don't you start with me, Cameron. I was against moving in with your parents this whole time, but you insisted that we do it over and over again. Even your dad told you to drop it since he could tell that I didn't want to do it. You even agreed to do all of the housekeeping if I did agree to move in with your parents. But instead, I've been doing most of it all the time. Okay, okay, I, I get it. Jeez. I was just asking because I thought you might say yes if it was from me. But I'm sorry for even mentioning it. I really didn't think that you would freak out on me like this is all. What do you mean? Why are you trying to act as if I'm in the wrong for not wanting to move out? Because this is my little sister coming back to live with the family. But I guess I'll just have to tell her that you're refusing to move out and that she'll just have to have good luck finding a place to live. But I'm sure that that will fix this whole situation, don't you think? Cameron, why are you doing this? You're really making me feel bad about just not wanting to move away for this. <coughs> when are you going to do as I say and finally move out, huh? Do you have any idea just how much trouble you've been putting me through? Everything that's going wrong with my life is all your fault. My fault? Are you kidding me? Just how do you figure that, huh? It's not just me that you're causing trouble for, though. I mean, do you think that my mom and dad would really prefer to live with some woman they hardly know versus their own daughter? And you need to read the room and recognize that you are not wanted here at all. So hurry up, get the picture, and move out already. Read the room? You have seriously got to be kidding me. That is rich coming from you. But I guess you might be right about one thing. Everyone has been acting very cold towards me these days. You mean you only noticed them acting that way towards you now? It took you long enough, I'll say. That's right. Everyone here must just be so worried about you. I hear all about how they are making every effort to go and visit you. They're even cooking and cleaning for you, isn't that right? And just what is wrong with that, huh? My parents have always enjoyed spoiling me when they can, and this is no different. I don't see anything wrong with them wanting to take care of their daughter while she's so distressed after coming home from New York. So far be it from me to tell them to not take care of me if that's what they want to do. And when they do get back from your apartment, they all treat me like I'm to blame for them having to go back and forth from the house. I've been told that I'm just being cruel for making you live like that when all I want to do is not have to move again. Well, if people are telling you that, then I guess you had better listen to them then, huh? Can't you see that everyone wants you out of here already? You would make everything easier for everyone if you were gone. <laughs> and even your own brother is starting to go back on his word even more and making me do more and more of the housework. And even though he's cooking for me as well, I've been getting more and more instant noodles and that's it. You know, your dad won't even look me in the eye anymore. Cameron said that none of this is going to stop until I've moved out. 
I don't have any other friends in this family at all. Everyone is blaming me for this. Well, maybe that's because it's all your fault, Cassandra. If you would just move out of the house, then all of this would come to an end for you. I mean, are you really so lazy that having to do your own housework and cooking is all that upsetting for you? You don't contribute anything at all while you leech off of my family, and you think you have a right to complain? I have no idea how you were raised, but you really need to get a grip on reality if you think this is okay. Hold on a second. You think that I'm being a leech on your family? Well, of course you are. You refuse to move out or do any chores or cooking or anything like that. Meanwhile, you eat the food in our house, sleep in a bed under their roof. What else do you call that but a leech? And everyone knows it too, because you're sucking off of everyone. When are you going to wake up and realize that nobody wants you? You have no idea what you're talking about at all. I have no idea why everyone is being so cruel to me. I am sick and tired of your complaints. Just shut up and leave already. I mean, why haven't you moved out? Oh, don't you worry. I'm going back to my parents' house right now. I can't deal with this anymore. Well, good riddance, I say. It's about time you left my family alone. <laughs> and now that you're finally gone, I get to go back to my life with my family. But I'll never get back the time that you stole from me. At least I'll be able to rest and relax without having to worry about you ever coming back. I just hope that you've taken all your stuff with you. Oh, don't you worry about that. In fact, if I were you, I would start cleaning up your apartment to make room for your family. Just what is that supposed to mean? Why in the world would I need to get my apartment ready for my family? I'm going to live with them, remember? Except that I'm actually in the process of selling your house right now. So I'm afraid that your family won't have anywhere else to live. You all better start looking for a new place. Oh wait, what? Seriously, what are you even talking about? What do you mean you sold my family's house? That doesn't make any sense. There is no way that you could have done something like that. I mean, I know you're upset that you're getting thrown out, but there's no need to make up a lie like this. I'm not lying about anything, Fiona. It was my name on the house's deed, you see. That still doesn't make any sense at all. Why would your name be on my family house's deed? You really don't pay attention to anything that goes on with your family that doesn't concern you, do you? I took over the deed to the house from the moment Cameron and I moved in with them. In fact, it was your family that forced me to do that, if you really want to know. But that, I don't, why would they do that? Why would they want your name on that? It all goes back to when we moved in, you see. Cameron had been begging me to go along with it and even offered to do all of the housework if I agreed. He told me that I wouldn't have to do any more work if we did this, and I trust him. But then he started to scratch away at his promise bit by bit. What do you mean by that? What did he do? Well, first everyone was so grateful that I had finally agreed, but then Cameron said that we would need to buy a new washing machine to fit all of our clothes in. Then he said that we would need to get a brand new fridge to fit enough food for us all. And bit by bit, we started buying all new things for the house. In the end, we must have spent over $100,000 upgrading the house. Hold on a second, you've spent over $100,000 on the house? That's right. I told him that I wanted his parents to pay me back for some of that money, but he suggested I just put my name on the deed on the house and call it even. I told him that that was taking it too far and that surely we could think of something else. But he just kept insisting about it until you finally agreed to just take the house. I really didn't think that he was going to go along with it, but I guess he really didn't want to have him or his parents pay me back that much money. He pretended to be so sad about losing the house, but I could tell that he just thought he was getting a great deal. I don't believe it! Why would he do something so stupid? I didn't even sign off on it in the end, but they had basically done all the paperwork needed and one day when I got home for work, Cameron said that all I needed to do was sign. I was sick of arguing with him over it, so I just agreed to it then and there. He told me that now we were even for all the appliances. Except they made me continue to pay for all of the utilities! I've even been the one buying groceries for everyone. I don't believe it. I don't know what to say. I had no idea that you were already paying for so much for everyone this whole time. Not only that, but then Cameron started to make me do more and more of the housework. So I had to pay more and do more around the house, all while I was still going to work. I was already starting to get to the end of my wits when all of a sudden this happened and your family started treating me even worse. But when I realized that no one was going to stand up for me anymore, I knew what I had to do. 
And by that, you mean you signed the house back over to my parents, right? Oh, no. Nothing like that at all. Hey, Cass, just, just what the heck is going on here, huh? I just heard from Fiona that you told her that you were selling our house? What's the matter with you? If you really wanted to move out permanently, you should have just given us the house back. You don't have to sell it. Yeah, I thought about doing that for a little bit. Then I chose to sell the house anyway. After all, I felt like I was pretty justified in doing it. And what is that supposed to mean? It means that you all pushed me to the point where I had no qualms about selling the house without even telling any of you. So enjoy finding a new place to live. You can't just do this to us. It isn't fair. What's the matter with you? Do you have any idea the kinds of things that you've been putting me through? You begged me to move in with your parents when you knew I didn't want to do it, and then you treated me like I was in the way for not wanting to move out. I can't stand the thought of spending another day in the house with all of you. Cass, please, just hold on. We can talk about this, can't we? You have to know that I'm so, so sorry for everything up till now. I really didn't know that you felt like this. I'm sorry for forcing you to move in with my family, but you don't have to do this. It's too late. I've already made up my mind, and I am going to be selling the house. I don't care what you say to me or how many times you apologize. Is this about money? We can pay you back for all the things that you bought, I swear. You just can't do it all at once is the thing. I don't want to hear it from you, and that still won't make me any less upset with you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have better things to do than talk in circles with you. I can't believe you really threw my whole family out of their house. They're all cramped inside my tiny apartment now, and it's all your fault. Aw, did you finally have your little family reunion? I'm so happy for you all. The least you could have done is pay for all of their moving fees. Do you have any idea how expensive it was for them? I have already given them more than enough of my money. I certainly don't intend on giving them any more. Please, you have to do something to get them out of here. I can't stand being in such tight quarters with them. I'm going to go crazy. Yeah, that really doesn't sound like my problem at all. I guess you'll all just have to start working and save up until you can afford a better place. But this isn't fair. I quit my job because I hated working and just wanted to live with my family and have them take care of me. It wasn't supposed to be this way. Not long after that, Cameron and I finalized our divorce. About a week after my last talk with Fiona, Cameron's entire family showed up on my doorstep and begged for my forgiveness. I told them that I wasn't going to talk about anything with them until the divorce papers were signed. After Cameron did, I said that I would need a few days to think about what to do. I was only a month lease at that place, and I used those couple days to pack up my bags and move to my real new house in the next city over. I managed to get myself as far away from Cameron and his family as I could before they realized what I was doing. I changed my number and did everything I could to make sure they could never find me again. Hey, Sarah. A long time no see. <laughs> I never would have thought that I'd be seeing you again. It's already been two years since I took Jay away from you, huh? Time really flies by, am I right? <laughs> no, it's been five years since you took him from me. And I never thought that I would see you again either. Five years? <laughs> wow, I guess it's true that time feels faster when you're having fun. <laughs> Were you finally able to escape homelessness in those five years? Or are you still living a miserable life as a homeless person? I saw you walking alone in the city at night. Were you trash diving to see if there was any food that you could eat? <laughs> Quit making fun of me. You took my husband from me and kicked me out of my own house. And yes, I was homeless at one point, but I got back on my feet all on my own. Now I have a proper job and I make enough to live a decent life. What? That's so impressive. <laughs> I never would have thought that a useless housewife like you would be of any use to anyone. Good for you, honey. Congratulations on escaping homelessness. What kind of work do you do right now? Oh, and tell me where you live. Why the hell would I tell anything to the woman who took everything from me? Don't be so cold. <laughs> you don't have to say it like that. We were classmates back in high school after all and pretty good friends too. 
You're nothing near my friend anymore. You stole your own friend's husband away from her. And in the end, you made her homeless. Not a day has passed where I didn't think about getting revenge on you. You're still mad after five years? Seriously? You really could be the bigger person here and forgive me after that many years. I would never forgive you. Wait a minute. You're still in love with Jay, aren't you? <laughs> That's hilarious. You're still in love with the guy who threw you away for your friend all those years ago? I mean, I guess that's kind of cute. <laughs> well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but he's still deeply in love with me. We went out and had a nice dinner to celebrate our fifth anniversary together just today. That's great. You two are acting like you're just a normal married couple, huh? That's funny because you two couldn't get further from normal. What's so wrong with celebrating our anniversary? <laughs> he made a reservation and took me to a restaurant that just earned a Michelin star a while ago. I think it cost him $400 for each of us. I mean, not that I expected any less from my sweet little business owner. Congratulations on not being homeless anymore. But you're still never going to get to eat at a place like that for the rest of your life. <laughs> Shut up. You should really worry about yourself more than me. Because there will be consequences for taking away someone else's happiness like the way you did. Don't think that you're just going to get to live this life forever. How about you shut up? You're just a stepping stool to me. Your ex-husband will continue to make me the happiest girl on earth. And there's nothing that you can do about it. Bye bye Miss Homeless. <laughs> Hey, Sarah. Who would have thought that I'd be seeing you again? <laughs> you looked healthier than I expected you to be. What did the two of you want from me? I don't have the time to be wasting on you right now. I am begging you, just leave me alone. We finally met again. Loosen up a bit. <laughs> or are you that busy with work? I heard from Crystal, but you finally found a job, huh? Yep. So, does that mean you're not homeless anymore? Yes, I got back on my feet from nothing, and I'm living a good life. And I don't intend on letting the people who ruined it to come back. So please, just leave me alone. You know what? I'm gonna visit the store that you work at. What? Why the hell would you come to the store that I work at? I mean, you were walking around near midnight in the city, so I'd assume that you're a prostitute, aren't you? That's the only place I'd imagine a housewife without a house would be qualified for. It looks like you haven't fixed your condescending personality yet. No, I don't work in any sort of job like that, and I never have. I mean, you can lie all you want, but the only person that you're fooling is yourself. Come to think of it, the only good thing about you was that you had a pretty face. So on second thought, I think a prostitute or stripper is the perfect job for you. If you let me go to your store, I'll buy you a few drinks. <laughs> I'd rather die of thirst than drink something you buy for me. And if you have the money to spend on girls, then I suggest that you save that up and pay me compensation. Compensation? For what? Don't act like you don't know. The day that we got divorced, you basically forced me out of my own house. I got home from grocery shopping and Crystal was there. And before I could even say anything, you made me sign the divorce paper. After that, you shoved me out of the door along with a duffel bag. Since you've been avoiding me since then, I still haven't received my half of our family's assets or compensation for your cheating. So what? <laughs> All the savings that we had as a couple was money that I had made on my own. Why the hell would you be able to take half of that away from me? What? And even the cheating isn't my fault. It's on you for letting the cheating happen, so it's your fault. I have no idea what makes you think that I should be paying you any money. I don't care whether you have no idea why. I have the right to that money, and you're gonna give it to me. I love your confidence! <laughs> well then, uh, good luck accomplishing that even though it's far past the time limit that you had to ask for that money. 
What do you mean by time limit? Didn't you know? You have a certain time limit to ask for those legal fees. Since it's already been five years since we got divorced, you don't have the right to that money anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're just as stupid as you were the day that I left you. You haven't changed a single bit. The way that your only good trait is your face, but your brain is the size of a pea, that's why you get thrown away by guys like me. But... I mean, it used to be annoying, but now I find your idiocy to be kind of cute. <laughs> it's like talking to a dog. Crystal's better than you in so many ways, including the way that she's super sharp. She always knows what I need, and what she needs to do. But she's been getting full of herself lately, and it's starting to annoy me. So I've decided that I'll give you some of the attention that you were desperately craving from me. Um, what? I'm saying that I'll be your customer and pay you a bit extra. <laughs> you know, I could even make you my girlfriend if you want. Aren't you glad that you'll be able to date the love of your life while simultaneously making good money? I don't have time to be messing around with you right now. I've learned to have enough self-worth to distance myself from trashy people like you. And as a matter of fact, I'd appreciate it if you never show your face to me again. Goodbye. Sarah, I just came up with the best idea ever. Why don't I just ask Jay to hire you so you could work for him? <laughs> what? Well, I heard from him that you're working as a prostitute now. But that job is anything but sustainable. I'm sure your employers are going to fire you as soon as you get too old for the job. If you keep a job like that, then you're going to go back to being homeless again before you even know it. So I'll ask Jay if he can hire you at the company that he owns. Look, I'm not a prostitute and neither do I have any intention of working for you people. I don't want to associate myself to you in any way. So stop getting ahead of yourselves. Sarah, I know that it's embarrassing to say that you're only qualified to be a prostitute. But we're friends after all, aren't we? <laughs> There's no judgment whatsoever, even if you're making money by getting paid by miserable old men. I'm not a prostitute! You know, I wholeheartedly recommend that you just become honest to yourself and own it. That way, Jay will be able to hire you to be his maid. And you can do all of the cleaning and cooking that he needs for 15 bucks an hour? What do you say? Isn't it much better than what you have to do right now? <laughs> a maid? Seriously? I wouldn't take the job even if you paid me a hundred dollars per hour. Don't be like that. Just take a deep breath and really think about it. You and I both know that you'll go back to being homeless if you put your pride first and keep your current job. You won't find people who are kind enough to lend you a hand like this in a million years. This is a one-time offer. Work for Jay or go homeless. <laughs> Wait, so does this mean that you haven't heard anything from Jay? Heard what? That his company is about to go out of business at any moment? I'm surprised that he still has the choice to hire me at a time like that. Wait. What do you mean his company is about to go out of business? That's impossible. His company is going amazingly, and I would even go as far as to say that it's at its best since Jay started it. I'm sure that he'll continue to expand it until we're too rich to spend all of the money that we make. <laughs> no matter how well the business is performing, if the police get a permit and step into your house, you're done. And I heard that they're going to do exactly that at any moment, so are you sure you should be bothering me right now? The police? I don't know what you're talking about. Why would the police get a permit to search our house? And it's impossible for a company that's doing so well to go out of business. You're just trying to speak bad things into reality to feel better about yourself. If the police are going out of their way to search your house, then that means that you've done something very illegal. I'm sure you were too busy enjoying your luxurious life to realize, though. Jay did something very illegal in order to make money. And now, thanks to him, his company is on the verge of going out of business. You keep saying he did something illegal. What exactly is it that you think he did? 
Jay is an innocent man who worked hard to get where he is right now. Yeah, that's what he says he is. But behind that facade is a man who was buying confidential information from his clients to make his business work. Thanks to that, his business grew to a scale that it never would have reached without illegal activity. I heard it's called insider dealing. Insider dealing? W well, there's no proof that he was doing such a thing. I'm sure this is all a trap that was set up by someone who was jealous of his success. Someone lied to the police. I'm sure that the police of our nation aren't dumb enough to believe it if it was a lie. And they have all of the proof that they need. Because even if you're speaking in a private room at a restaurant, everyone's going to hear what you're talking about if you're shouting like the way Jay was. And I, the owner, heard every single word loud and clear. Every single vowel of his confession to carrying out illegal activity to make his business work. Wait, what do you mean, owner? I'm the owner. You know, the restaurant that you and Jay went to on your anniversary. Also, the restaurant that Jay was using to have illegal meetings with clients. I own that restaurant. <laughs> what? You own that place? Wait, so you started your own restaurant? Yep and I was lucky enough to grow it into a pretty popular one too. But who would have thought that I'd be lucky enough to see all of this play out? <laughs> Wait, just hold on a minute. I don't understand. How were you able to go from a homeless person to a restaurant owner? You didn't have any money or skills. It doesn't make any sense that you're the owner of a popular restaurant like that place. It makes perfect sense to me. All I did was start from scratch and take the right steps in the right direction. Regardless of whether you have any money, experience, or fame, you can accomplish things if you try hard enough. This makes no sense. When I was still homeless, the others who were sleeping at the park cheered me on. They taught me that no one can stop you when you have nothing to lose. And that really stuck with me. I told myself over and over again that the only direction to go from here is up. So I saved up money and worked really hard until I was finally able to open my dream restaurant. And now you're this successful? What kind of a miracle is that? This makes no sense. Besides, you weren't there on the day that I went to that restaurant. Yeah, I had a meeting on that day about the management. So I left a trusted employee in charge. And then when I was heading back there, I stumbled upon the two of you after your anniversary dinner. Really? Yep. So thank you for coming over and dining with us. We hope to never see you again. The two of you are banned from my restaurant for life. So never show your filthy faces again. <laughs> you little snitch! I heard everything from Crystal! Huh? Maybe I did call the cops on you. Maybe I didn't. You little... How could you do this to me? Thanks to your big mouth, my company is done for. My whole life is done for because of you. That's not true at all. Even if you lose your company, you still have a lovely wife and a roof over your head. You're in a much better situation than when I had neither of those things. <clears throat> Damn it! Do you even have the time to be texting me right now? I heard a rumor that it isn't just insider dealing that you're being accused of right now. Apparently there have been several reports of bribery? What? Just so you know, those reports aren't coming from me. I've never seen you at a scene where there was bribery going on. But since there have been multiple reports, I guess you've been making lots of enemies. You've got to be kidding me. Who's doing this to me? My company was just taking off. It's going out of business now? And I might get arrested? What can I say? That's life. But I guess God decided that you deserved to have a taste of your own medicine. I hope you really acknowledge what you did and take responsibility for it. Sarah, I need you to answer. I don't know what to do anymore. Are the police arresting me too? The police came to our house yesterday and they just took Jay away with them. I heard. I saw some articles on news outlets online. 
and there were multiple confessions from previous employees in the comments section. Things like, they never paid me for overtime work, and they didn't pay me for my paid leave with some sorry excuse. The whole internet community is your enemy now. <laughs> but I'm not a part of that in any way. I'm just Jay's wife and that's it. I knew nothing about what was going on in his work life. I have no responsibility for this in any way. You can tell that to the police, Crystal. But I'm sure that they'll need to hear from you since you're an important witness. Hey, um, do you think I can still get divorced from him? I don't want to be a part of this whole thing anymore. I just want to leave. What? I mean, his company is about to go out of business, right? Then we're going to have to let go of our house, right? Not just the house, they'll probably take our savings and everything we own. Then I want to get divorced and not be a part of all of this. They're going to take me away next if I don't leave now. Don't be like that. You're his wife. He was a great husband who would celebrate your anniversary every year, wasn't he? Then I think you should support him through this as a wife. That's all possible given that he isn't a convicted felon. If he's in prison, then how am I supposed to keep on living? I don't have money or a house or a job. I never thought that this would happen. I mean, I could hire you at my place if you want. What? Yeah, I'll hire you and you can work at my restaurant until Jay does his time in prison and comes back. I can only pay you minimum wage, but I give three meals to all of my employees. I think you'll be able to keep going for a few years. Are you joking? You're telling me to work for you? Yeah, mainly cleaning, like the dishes and the bathrooms. Oh, and also as my personal servant. My legs are literally numb after standing up all day. So maybe you can give me foot rubs at the end of the day. How dare you? Who would ever do such things for you? You're basically telling me to be your slave. I have enough shame to refuse to do such jobs. Wow, that was my final offer to save you. But you lost this chance. So I guess the only other job option that you have is a prostitute or something. What? Yep, I mean, you have no house, money, or skills, right? Jay said so. There's only a certain type of store that would hire a woman like that. B but I would never do such a thing. I'm the wife of a business owner. I, I was eating $400 dinners. How could I end up as a prostitute? I, I will not allow that to happen. Then I guess you'll have to suck it up and live as a homeless person. I can tell you the park that I was staying at while I was homeless if you want. Oh, but the nice homeless people who helped me out aren't there anymore, so you'll have to get out of there alone. Everyone works at my restaurant now. What? Really? Of course. They're the reason that I was able to open the place in the first place. I invited them over for dinner on the opening day, and they all told me that they were inspired to get their lives together. So I thought they would make good workers. And they turned out to be exactly what I expected. They're now my trusted colleagues who basically made our restaurant into what it is now. Oh, but I guess people who are that kind wouldn't accept you as a coworker. <laughs> they know that you're the reason I became homeless in the first place anyway. Sorry, I think I'm gonna take back the offer. Well then, I'll see you never, Crystal. Since you went through the hassle of stealing my husband from me, take good care of him. <laughs> After that, I happened to spot Crystal sleeping at the park nearby. Apparently, she was almost arrested, too, but was released when the police found out that she had nothing to do with the incident. Either way, she'd lost everything, including her house. But her pride got in the way of her asking for help from her friends. So now she's living quietly as a homeless person. I saw in the news that Jay wasn't getting out of prison any time soon, so I hope Crystal makes it through. Anyway, it's another day of running my amazing restaurant with my amazing colleagues for me. Hey, Ellie, I'm going to take my daughter over to your house, so make sure to take good care of her. Ellie? 
could you please answer me when I text you? Sorry, I was getting ready to leave and left my phone in the other room. What do you mean you're bringing Julia over to my house? Well, I had no idea about this, but apparently she doesn't have school today. Because it's the school's 50th anniversary after its establishment. She's saying that she needs lunch. But I've already scheduled lunch with the girls. You know what I'm trying to say. No, I really don't. Well, I've been longing for this day for a really long time. I mean, who wouldn't? It's a buffet with cake and all kinds of sweets. So what I'm going to ask you to do is to take my daughter out for lunch and look after her until I come back. I'm sorry for not being able to help, but I have a shift at work in an hour. So I won't be able to look after Julia today. What? Well, that's too bad, because I already sent Julia on her way to your house. What? I am telling you, I can't look after her for today. I am literally about to leave. You say work, but it's literally a part-time job, isn't it? It's not like you're going to keep that job forever, so you shouldn't feel bothered about taking a day off. I need to go because my contributions to the family savings are necessary to keep up with the level of living that we currently have. But you don't even have kids to feed. <laughs> Haven't you heard from your brother that he moved jobs quite recently? He's starting as an entry-level employee, so his salary has gone down since his last job. But that doesn't change the fact that you two don't have kids, right? I'm sure you don't spend nearly as much as I do having to feed my kids. <laughs> Look, I'm sure you could manage to take one tiny day off of your low-paying job. It's not just the money. If I suddenly take a day off out of nowhere, then it might ruin my image from my boss and colleagues. Seriously? <laughs> I'm starting to feel bad for you, honey. You have to act like a goody two-shoes at your own workplace? I'd suffocate if I were ever to have to work at a place like that. I mean, not that I'd ever know how you feel since I married an elite engineer at a mega tech company. <laughs> if you feel bad for me, then it would really help for you not to leave your child over at our house so often. Why are you getting so worked up? Do you hate Julia or something? Of course not. Julia is an amazing girl. Then why are you complaining? I'm just letting my infertile sister-in-law have a taste of what it's like to raise a child, since she can't have one of her own. This is all out of the kindness of my heart. Why don't you show a little more appreciation for my efforts to make you feel better about yourself? Wow. And I don't want to be the one to tell you this, but you really did let our family down when we found out that you couldn't have kids. I mean... George is the only boy in the family, so he would have been our only hope to continue our bloodline. But thanks to you, he failed his mission. So I'm letting you prove your worth to the family by giving you a job. Be grateful. Such a useless wife. I feel so bad for poor George. We both know that you're just using me to your advantage because you don't want to do the work yourself. Oh, please. <laughs> Look, as I said at the beginning of this conversation, I can't take care of Julia today. So just call her back to your house. No can do. I've sent her over and that's final. I'm right about to step out of the door, so she won't be able to unlock the door until I come home. Take good care of her. <laughs> How could you be so irresponsible? Wouldn't it be irresponsible to abandon your niece and leave for work? Which is more important, your niece or your job? It's not a matter of which is more important to me. Before even discussing anything, she's your own daughter, isn't she? Then take responsibility for the life that you created yourself. My husband is out on a business trip right now. I'm taking care of my daughter all by myself. Can't I go on a little lunch break and have a little bit of fun with my friends? I wouldn't mind at all if it were once in a few months. You send Julia to our house without notice two or three times every month. 
If I could, then I would send her over every week. <laughs> you know, I don't get much alone time when my husband is in town, so it's my chance to have quality time by myself. Julia is always bothering me and chains me down from having my alone time. Seriously? Even if that thought came to your mind, you shouldn't say that aloud as a mother. Is it really my fault that I'm tired of her, though? Even my own mother-in-law became cold all of a sudden when she found out that my baby was going to be a girl and not a boy. She left in the middle of the gender reveal. I guess everyone wants a boy so that their bloodline continues on. You haven't told Julia about that story, have you? I'm not that bored. I have more to do than tell stories to my kid. Thank God. But seriously, though, ever since that girl was born, all that's changed is that I have more chores to take care of, and that's it. You know, if I'd known that it was going to be a girl, then I probably wouldn't have given birth. If she wasn't here, then I would have tons of time to go out partying like when I was single. I can't believe you just said all of that. How could God ever allow someone like this to become a mother and not me? I think God chose not to make you a mother so that you could babysit my kid. <laughs> I hope you have fun with Julia. Well then, I'm sure she'll be there soon, so take good care of her. She hasn't eaten lunch yet, so make sure to give her some. Oh, and as a matter of fact, feed her some dinner too. Thanks so much, XOXO. How many times do I have to tell you that I have work today? Well, it's not like I can change my plans this suddenly. I'll text you when I'm coming home, so make sure to take Julia home by then, all right? Well then, see you. Wait, Haley! George! Haley did it again. She just sent Julia over and left. What's the problem with that? You know that I have work today. And she won't even read my texts or answer my calls, so I think she has me on mute right now. Could you please call her and convince her? Convince her to what? If she had to make Julia come over, then wouldn't that mean that she had a valid reason to do so? I mean, if you consider lunch with her friends as a valid reason... Haley's been really busy taking care of her house and raising Julia. Why don't you cooperate a little and just let her have some fun once in a while? Really? Once in a while? She's been sending her child over to us without notice over and over again for the past few months. I get that we all need a break once in a while, but that doesn't mean that she gets to disregard our needs whenever she wants. Two or three times a month counts as once in a while. And you can't give birth to a child of our own anyways. You'd never understand how difficult it is to do her job as a mother. So why don't you cooperate a little and take some weight off of her shoulders? All right, then why don't you take a day off from work and come take care of her? Are you dumb or something? I'm taking care of an infertile, useless wife like you. I'm working a job that I don't even like for you. If you want to talk back to me, then I suggest that you do so after you start earning more than me with your part-time job. The only reason that I can't make more money than I already do is because you want to qualify for the dependency deduction policy. If you would allow me to, then I would be making more by now. Yeah, yeah. You can make all the excuses that you want. That doesn't change the fact that you'll never make more money than me. As a matter of fact, since you can't even give birth, the only way that you can make yourself useful is to do the work around the house. Oh, so that's all I am to you? Seriously? If you haven't noticed by now, I've been going through a lot after changing jobs. I don't have time for your nonsense. So why don't you solve some of your own problems on your own? I'm sure even your useless self will be able to do it. Why do you have to word it like that? <sighs> whatever. I don't have time for you. Just do whatever Haley's asking you to do. Think of it as my sister blessing you with an opportunity to get to feel like you're raising a child of your own. You sound exactly like your sister right now. That's great. I have to get back to work, so don't contact me until I tell you to. And also, excessive complaining is one of the top reasons for divorce, so watch out. You barely make any money with your job right now, and you don't have any savings. On top of that, you can't even have kids. 
No guy would want you, and you wouldn't be able to sustain yourself. So watch your mouth when you talk to me. How could you say that to your own wife? The only reason you're still my wife is because you're obedient. So I suggest that you shut your mouth and listen to my sister. Or else I'm going to lose any reason to keep you around. Besides, Julia's a very common, unproblematic kid. You probably won't even notice if she's there. But... I'm done with this conversation. Why won't you bother to listen to me? I had to tell my boss that I couldn't show up last week, too. I'll lose my job if I keep doing this. George? Hey, Ellie, what are your plans for the 15th to the 22nd of next month? I just have work like always. Wait, you have work for the whole week? Wow, I could never work like a slave like that. I don't have to go every day, but I still have to show up for a couple extra days to make up for the days I took off to look after your daughter. See, I told you that you could make it work. Well then, I guess that means that you'll be able to make things work for next month too then. Uh, what do you mean by make things work? The truth is, I'm gonna go on a family trip with my parents and my brother. A family trip? Yep, we're going overseas. I just finished renewing my passport today. Wait, then why can't you just take your daughter with you? Why would I take my daughter on the family trip? What do you mean? My family is me, my brother, and my parents. No one else counts as family. What? But she's your own daughter. We can't take a kid everywhere we go. Besides, I want to go to bars and parties during the night. And how am I going to hook up with anyone if there's a kid with me? I'm way too young and good-looking for guys to leave alone. <laughs> That's your reason for leaving your daughter behind with me? What do you think your husband is going to say about that? It doesn't matter. He's always away on business trips anyway. I just tell him that you're constantly asking me if you can have Julia over. Since, you know... You can't have children of your own. Why would you lie about that? Thanks to my explanation, my husband doesn't have a doubt in his mind that Julia always stays over at your place out of mutual agreement. But I've never begged you to let me have Julia over before. So, you know, you should really fix your attitude. You'd never understand how it feels to be a mother anyway. The only way that you can make yourself worth anything is to work for me. So I suggest that you do that. The only way to make myself worth anything? It's already been decided that we're going on the trip. So just give up and be prepared to take care of her for a week. Whatever. Fine. I'll be sure to prepare really well for that. We're about to go to the airport in George's car. I sent Julia on her way to your house, so take good care of her. I mean, George would throw you right away if you don't, so it's not like you have a choice. <laughs> I never would have expected my brother marrying an infertile woman to be this useful. <laughs> There's no need for him to throw me away. I've already divorced him. W what What do you mean you've already divorced him? I turned in the necessary papers, so now we're officially divorced. I haven't felt this free in so long. I don't understand. George is saying that he has no idea what you're talking about. He's been using a signed divorce paper to blackmail me into doing what he wants me to. The same thing has been going on for a while, and it was starting to get annoying. So I just signed my part of the papers and turned them in. That doesn't count! He was just joking! Since when do people sign divorce papers as a joke? And no matter what you say it is, if you sign an official paper, then it automatically possesses power. I wanted to get the divorce done anyway, so I don't think there's an issue at all. So what if you do get divorced? You're just a useless part-time worker who doesn't have money or any skills. You wouldn't make it through a single month without George. I'll be fine. I was just officially hired full-time by the place that I was working part-time at. Wait, full-time? You got a job? Yep, 
I've already finished moving out of the house thanks to the tiny amount of savings that I had left. I'll be living in the company's dorm from now on, so your brother won't ever have to see me anymore. I have a job in my own place now, so I don't need him anymore. I mean, the legal procedures are complete, so we're legally strangers anyway. Wait, you already left your house? Then who's gonna look after Julia while I'm gone? You don't have to worry one bit about Julia. She's meeting up with someone who can take way better care of her than a complete stranger like me. Right about now. She doesn't have any family nearby other than you. Of course she does. Someone who cares about her well-being more than you ever could. You know, the one last family member that isn't with you right now. Y you're bluffing. There's no way. That one last person I is somewhere in Asia right now. There's no way he could just fly back here. In fact, he already told me that he wasn't coming back home until the end of this month. Well, I guess there was a change in plans because he told me that he took a paid leave and flew back here. What? But he never told me anything about that. Do you think you can just make him come back because you can't take care of Julia? How irresponsible are you? Me? Through the eyes of anyone who has a normal thought process, you're obviously the one who's irresponsible here. I'm not irresponsible. Well, I think your husband disagrees with you. Deeply. What's that supposed to mean? Well, I explained every single detail about what's been happening between us regarding Julia to your husband. Like, every single detail? Yep. Wait, how on earth do you know my husband's number? Remember the New Year's party that we had with the whole family? Yeah. Well, I asked him for his contact details during that party. You know, since I'd been looking after Julia for quite a while. I just thought that it would be good to have both of your contacts in case there was any type of emergency. At the time, I thought that your husband was just the same as you and your brother. And that he was fine with making me take care of your daughter as a way to patronize me for being infertile. But after you told me that he didn't know that I was being forced to do this, I decided to take a chance and reach out to him to tell him what was really going on. Wait, so how much does he know? Everything there is to know. The fact that I'm not willingly taking care of his daughter and that you've been forcing me to do your job as a mother, even on days when I should really be at work. I also told him in great detail about how you, your mother, and your brother have changed completely after finding out that I won't be able to have kids. The way that you all would use me like a maid, saying that that's the only thing I'm good for? Y you're joking! Nope. And I got a very long and sincere apology from him after telling him all of this. He apologized for believing everything that you told him instead of making sure for himself. My husband apologized to you? Yep. And after I told him that I'd made dinner for Julia many times but hadn't received any money for it, he handed me a pretty large sum of money, saying that it was for any unpaid compensation and expenses. What? He shouldn't be paying a single penny to you. The money that he earns belongs to our family. Give it back. Why don't you tell that to your husband? I'm sure the two of you will be having a long talk about money after this. I've heard that figuring out the whole thing about child support can be a hassle. Wait, what do you mean, child support? Well, I mean, you have children and you're getting divorced, so there will be some child support that you're going to have to pay. Divorce? What do you mean, divorce? This is your fault. My husband divorced me and took my child. He took everything from me. He's even saying that I'll have to pay him child support? What are you gonna do about this? He was the best option that I was ever going to find. What do you mean it's my fault? It sounds like all of this is the result of your own actions. Shut up. I've already told George, so he's going to have a long talk with you about this. Uh, I mean, I would love to have a long talk with George, but I've already blocked him, so that won't be happening. Wait, you blocked him? Yep, 
I just thought it would be easier for me to have my lawyer do everything. So I just sent him my lawyer's number and blocked him after that. Even though the divorce is done, we still have to discuss terms about how to divide the assets that we own and things like that. Besides, I'll be suing him for all of the verbal and mental harassment that he's dealt me about being infertile. So I'm gonna need a lawyer anyways. Wait! Do you seriously think that you're in a place to be suing other people? Because you're dead wrong! We should be suing you, if anything! Well, I'm suing you along with your brother. Why? Do you not remember the countless times that you made me go through physical labor against my will? What physical labor? The physical labor of taking care of your daughter while you were out having fun. I'm not sure about how much I'll be able to get from you on this. But no one's getting away unbothered. Do you know what you're doing? I might get divorced from my husband. I won't be able to pay anything. Everything was going perfectly until you ruined it. Your own actions are what took away the trust that you once had from your husband. And I can say that with confidence because I can tell how deeply your husband loves your daughter, unlike you. What am I supposed to do now? I finally found someone who earns tons of money and isn't home most of the time. He was perfect. He told me that he was going to have you pay him back. Pay him back what? All of the money that you spent for yourself when it was really meant for Julia. Oh no, please stop him. Why? Well, I kind of lied about some of the expenses that I said were for Julia's school clubs and other fees, and I used it to go out for lunch and buy things for myself. Great, I'll be sending a screenshot of what you just said to your husband. No! Wait, I I'm just kidding! You told him that she was on the soccer team, volleyball team, swim team, and chess club, right? I can't wait until he finds out that Julia's only on the chess club, and that she never needed equipment for any sport. You took pictures of her during tryouts for those teams, and you're still using those pictures to lie, right? He's saying that he'll take every single cent and every single lie into account and figure out how much he'll be suing you for. But my perfect plan. Look, I'm sure every parent has their ups and downs, but it's just wrong to see you use your own child to your advantage to get some extra money. That's just not acceptable. I'll be handing our whole conversation to your husband, so be prepared. Wait, please. Aren't you my older sister? I'm begging you, don't make things worse. Ellie, I can't go on a trip like this. <laughs> Haley and her husband ended up getting divorced as warned, and as you could probably have guessed, her husband got the rights to Julia. After finishing the legal process, I heard that Julia moved to another country with her father. As announced, I sued my ex-husband and his sister for compensation. They both ended up losing against me and tried to rely on their parents for money, but they just ended up getting ridiculed by their parents and kicked out of their house. I guess I know where they got their amazing personalities from now. As of right now, I don't know or care about what the two are doing or where they are. Josh, where the hell are you? The wedding ceremony is about to start. Sorry, Alice. Do you think that we can cancel it? What? I'm sorry, but I don't want to marry you. What do you mean you don't want to marry me? Why didn't you tell me this earlier? Everyone is already here. Are you serious? I want to follow my dream. Can you tell everyone that the wedding is canceled? What the hell? Me? Okay. First of all, you want to cancel the wedding because you want to follow your dream? That is bullshit. I know that there are other reasons to spit it out. Okay, but it's going to be really long. To be honest, I think that I have some kind of superpower to earn a lot of money. What? Are you on some kind of drug? No, I'm not. This is true. I didn't tell you, but my friend who was a year older than me in school introduced me to an investment, and I started it from three months ago, and it's doing really well. I didn't know you were so into investment. Well, don't all guys wish they were rich? Also, my friend is a great guy, so I trust him. So I started to invest with 10 grand. 10 grand? Are you serious? 
The more I invest, the more I can increase the profit. I need to carry some level of risk to make profit, you know. And guess what? I actually did that and 10 grand became 100 grand. Oh my god, that much? I can't stop smiling. My friend told me that I have everything that it takes to be a successful investor. So that's why I want to keep on doing it and become really rich. That's when I realized, why would I marry such a mediocre person like you? Excuse me? So this is why I don't want to marry you, okay? I will succeed in investment and become a billionaire someday. So I need to marry a hot woman like Angelina Jolie. Don't worry. I have money, so I'll pay for the cancellation fee and alimony all at once. So you better not complain. Bye, Alice. I hope you find someone mediocre like yourself. Three years later. Hey, Alice. How is everything? I'm guessing not okay, right? It's been three years already, and I know that you were crying every single day. But don't worry. I came back to get married to you. You decide to contact me after three years out of the blue and tell me that you want to get married? What the hell? Why are you so pissed? Your ex who loved you came home for you. Just be honest and say that you are happy because I know you are. Are you serious? I am so pissed at you. Do you know how I felt after you dumped me at the wedding three years ago? I felt sad, frustrated, and embarrassed. I can still remember that feeling. Being pissed at me means that you still love me, right? You don't need to hide that, so let's get married. You're joking, right? Nope. I already reserved the venue that we held the wedding ceremony three years ago that I canceled. Why don't we get married next month? Please don't tell me that you're serious. There is no way I will marry you. You even said that you will never marry a mediocre person like me. That's why we broke up, but you decide to come back three years later and say, let's get married. Are you an idiot? I actually failed an investment, so I'm in debt now. Don't worry, it's just 100 grand. What? What happened? You were bragging that you have everything it takes to be a successful investor. I do have everything that it takes. My friend betrayed me, which caused me to be in debt. He introduced me to one of the most successful investors, and I was one of the favorites. So us three decided to invest into this brand together. The guy said that we should be able to make a lot of money even if there is only 1% change. Please tell me you didn't invest all of your savings. I did. It's my friend who I trust and one of the most successful investors. This guy does lectures at seminars, so him telling me that I might be successful? Of course I invested all of my savings. Oh, wow. But we failed. The stock was moving the opposite direction of what I was expecting it to, so I lost everything. When I asked my friend and the guy, they told me that investing can be unpredictable, and there is no guarantee that the stock will move in the direction I expect it to. It was also said that there is no refund. Hmm, sounds like a typical scam to me. Since then, I haven't heard from both of them, so maybe it is. I wish this is not true, but right now, I don't have a job and money. This is when you come into the picture. You love me even though I had nothing, right? What? Oh, I checked your social media, Alice. You got a promotion at your company? You have a yearly income about a hundred grand, right? You worked hard for me. I appreciate it. What? For you? You worked your ass off because you were worried about if I would fail the investment, right? That's so nice of you. Excuse me? Sorry for leaving you for three years, but I came back like you wanted. So let's get married and redo the wedding. I know you were waiting for this. Um, sorry, but who is this? Huh? Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Alice's husband, Dylan. I was next to Alice reading all the conversation, but you are a disgusting person. Stop talking as if my wife still loves you because she doesn't. Wait, what? Husband? Why did you marry someone else when you have me, Alice? You are the one that canceled and told her that you can't marry her in the first place. What? So do me a favor and don't contact Alice anymore, okay? Bye. The next day. Yo, Alice, are you serious that you have a husband? I'm the one that's going to be your husband. I won't let you marry someone besides me. Didn't my husband tell you not to contact me anymore? Did you lose your brain also? Shut up. You need to marry me and only me, okay? So that's why you should dump your husband. I checked his social media and looks like he's not that big of a deal compared to me. Excuse me? He's a stay-at-home husband relying on you, right? So he does household chores and only works part-time? 
Wow, aren't you embarrassed? Can you marry a loser like that? <laughs> Shut the f up. Dylan is a million times better than you. Alice, can you please realize that I'm the only one that can make you happy? Even though I failed an investment, I have everything it takes to succeed again. I will succeed next time, I promise. So can I use your savings? I can make it double or even more. What? Are you serious? You should use it for investment rather than making a deposit at the bank. Please trust me. So dump your loser husband and marry with me because I know I can succeed. Strike back. Um, my husband already has a yearly income of a hundred grand. What? So I don't need to marry a d- like you. I married my husband not because of money, but his personality. So I really don't care if you do or do not succeed. Wait, what do you mean your husband has an income of a hundred grand? He's a stay-at-home husband and only works part-time. How can he have that much money? He's a doctor, that's why. Doctor? When he was a doctor before marrying me, he worked his ass off, and because of that, he gets calls from the hospital when they need help. And that is his part-time job, actually, and it's a pretty good payment. He became a stay-at-home husband because he wanted to support me. What? He also writes articles and gets asked to supervise medical TV shows, so including those, he makes a good income. His yearly income last year was a hundred grand, and we were really surprised. I thought he was some loser. Wow. A doctor and a yearly income of a hundred grand. How can I beat him? Whatever you do, you are nothing compared to him. <laughs> what? So don't ever contact me, okay? I'm enjoying my job, making pretty good money. And I have a husband who I love and respect, so you are nothing to me. <coughs> a week later. Hi, Alice. Sorry for contacting you while you're working, but can I ask you something? It's pretty urgent. Of course, you never contact me during work, so I'm surprised. What happened? Can you tell me your ex-boyfriend's name and explain how he looks like? The guy that I talked to. Sure, but why do you want to know? He doesn't contact me anymore. I think he's trying to do something to me. What? I get calls from the bank asking me if I'm interested in this investment, and if I am, all they want me to do is deposit money because it seems like they will do everything for me. I refused a few times, but... I keep getting calls, so I feel like something is wrong because the explanation was very sloppy. So I called the bank and asked this, but nobody knew about it. Really? I have a gut feeling that it's him, because the timing is too perfect. Yeah, you're right about that. But the thing is, I think he's not that stupid to do something like this, though. I agree. I just wanted to make sure because there are other suspects like weird people at my hospital. Understood. I'll tell you about him just in case. I'll send you a picture if I have any in my phone. Thank you. Sorry for asking you this while you were busy. No, no. I'm the one who should be apologizing. Sorry for involving you in this mess. <coughs> Two weeks later. Hey, Alice. My life is back on track. I'm deciding to begin an investment company. I earned the initial capital for it. You were in debt of a hundred grand. How did you earn it? I'm really smart, so I earned it doing a lot of things. So do you want to start a new life with me? I will earn a lot of money and make you happy. You still haven't given up on me? We are meant to be, because I never met a woman who has a yearly income of a hundred grand. So think about whether you want to be with someone who is only a doctor, or someone who might be a billionaire. I respect your mentality of never giving up, but I will never be with you, okay? I'm actually at a cafe where we went on our first date, so I'll be waiting for you here. If you meet me, you'll probably remember all the good memories we had. Hmm, <laughs> probably. Great! I'll be there in like 15 minutes, with the police. What? Police? Why? Sorry to say this, but they might arrive earlier than me, thanks to my husband. What's going on? You reported me to the police? You tried to steal a lot of money from my husband, didn't you? Don't you dare tell me that you have no clue. Huh? We know everything you know. You called Dylan pretending to be a banker and recommended investment, right? You even said something like, if you're interested, deposit 100 grand and leave the rest up to me, right? My husband knew it was some kind of scam because your explanation was very sloppy. What? You both knew everything? Yep, we went to the police to talk about this and looks like they're searching for you now, but... 
They can't find you because you're homeless now, right? Oh, about that. The police said that if they don't know where you are, they can't arrest you, so my husband and I cooperated with them. My husband showed interest in your investment, and he invested a hundred grand, right? Thank you for falling for this trap and even meeting me at the cafe. No, there are a lot of police outside. Wow, they arrived really quick. I'm impressed. Oh my god, what should I do? I didn't mean to do the scam. I just wanted initial capital from my new company. All I did was use the bank's name and try to steal your husband's money because you didn't want to take me back. That's called a scam, Josh. Why? I know that I can make your husband's money double through investment. I will guarantee that you will fall in love with me again and marry me. Then I can return your husband's money by paying for alimony. Isn't this a brilliant plan? It's not a scam. Oh my god. I can't believe how stupid you are. Okay, you know what? Why don't you talk to the police about this? Oh, we're going to arrive in a little bit at the police station. Wait, I don't want to be arrested. Please help me. I don't want to fall to rock bottom. You already are. See you at the police station. We'll issue a complaint report. <coughs> After the incident. I found out that Josh's debt was actually 300 grand. His family, relatives, and friends were not on his side and even said that they wanted him punished. So because of that, he was found guilty and went to jail without probation. Peace finally came, so my husband and I will support each other from now on and we'll have a peaceful life. Thank you for watching all the way until the end. If you felt good after watching this video, please like the video. If not, please leave a comment and give us your feedback. Also, don't forget to subscribe! Your comments and likes help this channel grow. We hope you enjoy our other stories as well.